This video concludes a three-part series on dairy products. My first video was entitled, No More Dairy Proteins, IBS, Autoimmune, A1 versus A2, Lactose Intolerance, and more. If you haven't seen it, check it out. The second was entitled, Dairy Products, IGF-1, and Cancer. You might find some of the information eye-opening. Now we'll address the most popular misconception about dairy products, that they are good for your bones. Can you find published papers which contradict what I'm about to cover? Yes, you can. But be sure you check on the authors, who they work for, who sponsors them, where they teach, etc. Because these days, everything seems to come down to money. I have nothing to gain by telling what I feel is the truth. And I hold no grudge against cows. And I wish I could make this video knowing that vanilla ice cream with some amaretto drizzle on top is the best food for your health. I'm just telling you how I see it. But many people can't handle the truth. If that applies to you, my platform is not your cup of tea. For those of you who seek honesty and resolution and are beginning to understand that the system is not working for you, then keep watching. From here on out, I'll be citing from my book, which was published 15 years ago. To keep the length of this video reasonable, I'll be referencing parts of two sections. One is from the acid-base balance in the bone health chapter. But first, we'll start with a section entitled Osteoporosis slash Calcium Myth within my chapter entitled Dairy. To reiterate my important point from earlier, if dairy were so good for our bones, then why is it that the nations that consume the highest amounts of dairy have the highest incidence of osteoporosis? Sure, bone is primarily made up of calcium, and dairy products contain substantial amounts of it. But why is it that nations which consume less dairy and protein have much less osteoporosis? For how many years have you been hearing about osteoporosis, calcium, and dairy? As a nation, do you think we're any closer today to the answer than we were 10 or 20 years ago? Why is it that our Paleolithic ancestors seemingly had no problems with bone mineralization in their dairy-free lifestyle? Could it actually be that dairy products contribute to osteoporosis? It sure seems that way. The high protein content of dairy products has been shown to cause a leaching of calcium from the bone. This was evidenced in the Harvard study, which looked at 78,000 women and found that those who got the most calcium from dairy products actually broke more bones than those who rarely drank milk. In an earlier study on the other side of the globe, Australian researchers showed that a higher dairy consumption among elderly men and women was associated with an increased fracture risk. When those in the highest consumption group were compared to those in the lowest, there was an almost doubling of the risk of hip fracture. Additional studies have proved the same results. An extensive review done in 2005 of the existing literature on bone mineralization and children yielded some interesting results. The researchers looked at 58 studies in regards to the relation between dairy and or calcium intake and bone mineralization and or fracture risk. This extensive review showed that, quote, neither increased consumption of dairy products, neither total dietary calcium consumption have shown even a modestly consistent benefit to child or young adult bone health. This doesn't seem like such a stretch when you consider the low amounts of calcium consumed in other less affluent nations during those same years. And as adults, osteoporosis is virtually non-existent in those non-dairy consuming nations. The bone mineralization will come with a healthy and dairy-free diet as a child develops. As an adult, it is more important to reduce bone loss. How is it that cows, elephants, and other large herbivore mammals build such large bones? They consume greens. While the animals may eat grass, we can digest leafy greens and other vegetables beans, nuts, and seeds. Researchers at Yale reviewed 34 published studies, which encompassed 16 different countries. Some of our usual suspects were included, such as Sweden, Finland, and the United States. They found that those countries that consumed 
the most animal food, which obviously included dairy, had the highest rates of osteoporosis. They also showed that African Americans who consumed much more calcium on a daily basis than South African blacks were nine times more likely to suffer from a hip fracture. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and recommend to friends and family. Also, if you're feeling extra generous, hit the super thanks below. Looking at one of these groups specifically, we see that the Bantu women in Africa consume no dairy products at all and take in only about 250 to 400 milligrams of calcium per day from vegetable sources. This 250 to 400 milligrams is a fraction of the RDA set for us here in America. After having multiple children and breastfeeding all of them for months, even with no dairy intake, osteoporosis is virtually unknown among these women. Now we're going to switch gears and cite from excerpts from my section entitled Acid-Base Balance within my chapter Bone Health in order to complete our understanding of this topic. So let's get started. One of many researchers goes on to state, quote, Western diets are also high in protein, especially animal protein. The international epidemiologic data show an association between protein consumption and osteoporotic fractures. The acid urea caused by such diet promotes urinary calcium loss. Proteins are made from amino acids. There are two types of amino acids that contain sulfur, cysteine and methionine. The sulfate from these two amino acids causes calcium to be excreted into the urine. Many studies have shown a clear link between protein ingestion and calcium excretion. In one review paper from 1999, the authors state, quote, the effect of dietary protein on calcium balance is a well-documented phenomenon. As the intake of dietary protein increases, the urinary excretion of calcium increases as a result of decreased fractional tubular reabsorption such that doubling protein intake results in a 50% increase in urinary calcium excretion. They then make the very important statement, quote, as a result, recommended intakes of dietary calcium are influenced by the protein intake of the population for which they are set. This largely explains why recommended calcium intakes for the United States population are higher than those for populations in other less industrialized nations. This is why other researchers look at the argument for dairy to conserve bone mass and question its value. In one paper it stated, quote, according to calculations by Weaver and others, even with the calcium effect of protein and sodium, dairy product consumption should result in a positive calcium balance and presumably a positive effect on bone mineralization. However, in clinical, longitudinal, retrospective, and cross-sectional studies, neither increased consumption of dairy products specifically nor total dietary calcium consumption has shown even a modestly consistent benefit for child or adolescent bone health. To confirm this entire concept, these researchers conducted a novel trial. They took 15 subjects and put them on three different diets for 12 days each, and then monitored for acid-base balance. The diets were otherwise equal as far as calcium, sodium, calories, phosphorus, and total protein. They progressed the patients from a purely vegetable-based protein to an ovo-vegetarian, to an animal source. They stated, quote, in our study, switching from vegetarian to ovo-vegetarian to animal protein diets caused a progressive increase in urinary sulfate and net acid excretion, which was accompanied by a rise in urinary calcium excretion. Our results suggest that the major calcium factor during animal protein ingestion is bone resorption in response to the acid load. Many other researchers have substantiated this link. Upon assay, it has been found that the content of the sulfur amino acids, methionine, and cysteine in animal-derived proteins is two to five times higher than in grains and beans. In one study, which looked exclusively at methionine, it was found that the ingestion of six grams of methionine raised urinary calcium excretion by 80 milligrams in 24 hours. That's a lot of calcium when you consider 
that much more than 80 milligrams of dietary calcium is needed to replace that given absorption. You'll probably find it interesting that calcium excretion in the urine can be reduced by giving buffers to subjects. It has been shown many times that a diet high in fruits and vegetables, which are metabolized to bicarbonate, have a bone sparing effect. It has been speculated and shown by some that the high potassium content in the diet is largely responsible for this effect. It is widely documented that potassium ingestion increases sodium excretion, which is certainly one mechanism to conserve bone. But in regards to protein consumption, the value of potassium likely still holds some truth, but this has not been shown repeatedly. It may be that the bicarbonate is the more efficient participant in this equation. With this in mind, 171 men and women over the age of 50 received with placebo potassium bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate, or potassium chloride for three months. All the subjects got 600 milligrams of calcium per day and 525 IUs of vitamin D daily. They found that bicarbonate groups had favorable effects on calcium excretion and bone resorption markers while potassium on its own did not have these effects. Years earlier, other researchers took a look at just bicarbonate use and markers of bone health. Nine healthy volunteers were administered bicarbonate in a controlled setting. They found that this acid excretion in the urine decreased very significantly. In their words, urinary calcium excretion decreased immediately, reversibly, and significantly during bicarbonate administration and remain decreased throughout the seven-day period, resulting in significant cumulative calcium retention. I also go on to talk about the effects of sodium, cortisol, exercise, and more in bone health. But for our purposes here, we're simply addressing the myth that dairy products are good for your bone health. And the key part of that equation is the sulfur-containing amino acids in dairy products. It's more important to understand the biochemistry and the data than the marketing campaigns from those who have vested interests in separating you from your money. I'm sure by now you've realized that the system as it is, is <laughs> If you have decided to no longer be a lemming in it, then the best way out of it is to arm yourself with the correct information. Watch my videos and expose yourself to a new perspective of looking at your health. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, somewhere around here, you can go to my website where you can schedule a consultation with me. You can also view the protocols. And here, you can watch the next video.